Welcome or welcome back to the 8th Concession. My name is Natalie. Well, it's almost the end of the gardening season this year and as some of you may remember, I did a video on gardening hacks using things from the dollar store to help keep gardening more affordable and, you know, find ways around the expense of some high ticket items. So over the years, I've bought a lot of gardening things from dollar stores and this is going to be my top 10 of items to never buy at the dollar store. I've been disappointed with some of the things that I've bought and used and I want to share them with you today so you don't have to buy them and be disappointed. Let's get started. The first item I want to talk about are gardening trowels. Now, of course, I use a lot of trowels and here on the 8th concession, we have a lot of clay soil. So our soil can be very compact and very hard. And um, I think this says it all. <laughs> the gardening tools bought at the dollar store just do not hold up to really hard wear and tear. Tough soil, um, they tend to rust. This one hasn't rusted, but it is actually bent in half <laughs> as I tried to pull some things out of the ground. They are not worth it unless you are just using some potting soil in a big container and it's light and fluffy and you just need something to scoop with, fine. But if you're going to be doing real gardening in the ground or in tough soil of any kind, do yourself a favor and invest in some high quality garden tools. I learned my lesson and I invested in a, a Spear and Jackson trowel, not from the dollar store. And this little thing has been just amazing. It never bends, it never rusts. I'm really, really happy with this. I will never buy a trowel at the dollar store for myself or for anyone else ever again. The next thing I want to talk about is potting soil. Now, at the dollar store, you can get this size bag. I've used bigger size bags. I'll often even use it just for starting seeds. And I have to admit that this year it really was brought home to me that this type of potting soil just is not good enough to start your plants. You can get them to germinate. Uh, you can even get them to grow a bit. But the difference between planting in good quality potting soil that has the minerals and vitamins and fertilizer in it that you need, or that the plants need, I should say, um, versus this, which seems to be almost sterile, is really quite astounding. And I saw that with my pepper plants this year, where the ones that had been grown just in dollar store potting soil versus one that was actually grown in better quality soil, because that's what I had left over, was astounding. And all through the season, that pepper plant has been doing better than the other pepper plants because it had a better, a quicker start. So even though it's tempting to use this sort of potting soil, certainly um, maybe if you're putting it in a pot outside, you could fill up with this, but you will have to add fertilizer to it throughout the season to keep your plants healthy and looking great. And certainly for starting seeds, I recommend going with a good quality seed starting potting mix. This is another tool that I was sorely disappointed in. Now this is an edger. And here on the eighth concession, we have spots where I really wanted to pull back the grass, make it nice and neat. And I used to own an edger um, and I don't know what happened to it. Somewhere in some of our moves, it got lost. So I thought, well, this is good and it was inexpensive. I think at this particular dollar store, you can get things for under $5, $5 and under. So at, at most, this was $5. Uh, but I can tell you there is a reason why it's not worth five dollars. Uh, it's not worth anything because as soon as I put it in our ground, and as I mentioned, we can have some tough spots in our ground where the soil's really compacted. The first thing this did was bend. It wasn't sharp. It was useless. It was a waste of money. I wish I had spent this money towards a really good quality edger that would last more than one dig. Plant pots. You see them all the time around the dollar store and they're nice and convenient and in the spring when you want to start a lot of plants it looks like a great idea. What I didn't realize in the beginning is these are not the same as the brand name peat pots which are made from compressed peat moss. These are actually made from pressed cardboard and while they keep their shape well and they're easy to use and inexpensive 
I think this pack was uh, 28 for only $1.50, which is great. However, the I have the same problem with these that I have with toilet rolls, and that is when I'm starting seeds and they're going to be in here for quite a while, they tend to go moldy. And it is so disappointing because I'm always worried it's going to damage the plants, and sometimes the plants don't make it. They suffer from damping off, which is something seedlings can get. Um, so these are not worth it. Look for the type that are actual peat pots and not just the pressed cardboard pots. Here is another gardening tool that I was disappointed in. These are some gardening shears. Again, I think they were around the $5 mark and my other ones had gone dull and my husband didn't have the grinder to, to sharpen them and I thought I'm going to grab these because I wanted to get some trimming done. But these are only one season old and I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but they are already rusty. Not only did they get rusty easily, they were dull very quickly. I might as well have just used the old ones. And um, it wasn't even this pair. There was another pair that I had where uh, the bolt didn't even hold and the, the blades actually went past each other and it wasn't even cutting anymore. I think all that it had happened is I had put it on the ground to, you know, dropped it onto the ground and they bent. Like, they do not last they weren't worth the money. I should have put that money towards a new sharpening stone or a grinder to get my good quality shears in order. This sprayer. Now I had bought some oils, a dormant oil spray to do my orchard in the spring and I grabbed this sprayer at the dollar store because it was inexpensive and it looked great, has all the instructions that you need, but I have to tell you it doesn't work right. It worked a little bit at first where you have to pump to get the the pressure up so you can spray but that was I got one season out of it and then this season it already isn't working properly. I'm not going to go back and buy another one there. I'm going to get a proper br a brand name one um, because all you, if you only get one season out of it you're really not saving any money so I, I did not have any luck with this pressure sprayer. I came down into the garden to show you this next one. Now, some of you may remember that I used some tomato cages to make obelisks or trellises, and these had my sweet peas on them, and they have stood up great, and they were great support. However, <laughs> for their original use as tomato cages, the dollar store tomato cages just don't cut it. These ones were supposed to be holding up my Perron sprayless tomato plants, and you can see they just aren't sturdy enough to hold up strong, large plants. So that's a real disappointment. I had them farther in the ground. They've pulled, as you can see, they've pulled like right up out of the ground and they bend very easily. They might be good for a plant that doesn't get that big or heavy, maybe a dwarf twite type of tomato or a certain kind of flower, but for proper large tomato plants, they just aren't strong enough. Dollar store twine. Now you can get different kinds of twine. You can get like a jute twine, but this, um, this is more like a, a plastic twine. It comes with a little cutter blade, which you'd think would be handy, but to be honest, this just didn't last. Once the sun got at it and it had been out around plants for a little while, it broke down very quickly and uh, whatever I was trying to tie up just fell over. I am not happy with this at all. So I do not recommend, if you want to get some good twines that you can hold things up with, um, maybe look at the hardware store rather than the dollar store. Seed starting trays. Now again, it's the spring, you wanna get started. You see these packs in the dollar store. They'll come with the, the lid. They might even have some peat pellets in them or some cardboard, uh, cardboard little uh, seed cups in them. And so I succumbed and I bought some. Um, even though, as you know, I don't like plastic. I was desperate though. And it is hard to find a good alternative to plastic when it comes to keeping the water contained when you water them. It's easy to find um, 
it's easy to find other containers for your plants. You can make them out of newspaper or toilet rolls if you want or uh, paper cups, but trying to keep the water off um, countertops or desks or wherever you might be starting your plants, especially if you're starting them indoors, you usually end up turning to plastic. But there's plastic and then there's plastic. And this plastic, it was inexpensive. I forget what I paid, maybe around $2 for this. And uh, it wasn't worth it. Once the soil, the pots were in here and they were heavy with soil and water, and I went to pick it up to either transplant them or move them to harden them off, this stuff just is so thin that it would bend and sometimes they would fall out. It was so frustrating. Uh, I think if you have to go the plastic route, there is much better plastic. Now, the domes aren't bad. This is actually even a firmer plastic. I guess you can put the cover underneath to strengthen it, but even then, sometimes it's still not the firmest thing. And I do find that after one season or so, the plastic does tend to sort of rip or crack. You're lucky if you get a couple seasons out of these. I think I'd prefer to invest in something a little longer lasting. And finally, garden hose attachments. Now, this is something that a mistake I make over and over again. And that is buying an inexpensive hose sprayer at the dollar store. They work great at first, but the minute, the, the slightest minute you, you drop it or you put your hose down too quickly, or even at the end of the season, I find that they break. Um, this is not quite the, the change of the sprayer function isn't working properly anymore. Sometimes this plastic handle just snaps right off. Sometimes the washer inside is no good and it leaks everywhere. It really is worth buying a better quality hose sprayer. Otherwise, yes, you may only be paying four or five dollars for it at the dollar store, but you're buying one every year. And in the meantime, you're being sprayed constantly as it leaks. So I think, again, investing in a decent hose sprayer um, would be a better way to go. So there you go. 10 things I think you should avoid buying at the dollar store. Yes, you may save a bit of money in the beginning, but you're going to pay more in the end as you have to replace it after only one season or only a few uses, or you're frustrated because they don't really do the job the way they're supposed to, and they're not really a help in the garden. Hope it's been of some help to you. Bye for now.